Today, I'm going to be building a bunch of your favorite video games in LEGO in order to form the greatest army ever known to man. I tried this same challenge almost a year ago and made some pretty cool stuff, but what we're going to make in this video is a million times better than everything we made last time. Starting with building some Pokemon, I chose to make the most unknown Pokemon of all time, Pikachu. So I grabbed my yellow pieces and first made a tail that shaped like his lightning bolt. And then I made a body with some brown stripes and added some legs with some tiny yellow parts and finally built up his head with his two eyes, his two ears. For the cheeks, I added on these red studs with holes in them so that I could shove in electric pieces for him to use thunderbolts. It's also made so that I can adjust him from standing to be on all four and jump others. Next, let's make Clash of Clans. Last time I made a wizard and barbarian minifigure, but today I'm gonna build a wizard tower from the game, so I used a bunch of slope pieces and spent three hours building a rock formation that was shaped like a tornado. Guys, I may have also popped an illegal building technique and just shoved pieces right in here, but the police are scared of me. And after a bunch of time, the rock formation was done, it looked super detailed and accurate to the shape in the game, and I plopped the wizard on top to shoot some fireballs. But next, we need to build something to attack this tower. So I'm gonna build the to build the Hog Rider, I used some legs, a $40 torso, and then head and hair before adding these golden studs underneath his arms to represent the ice that he has on his wrist. Then I gave him his weapon along with the Lego Pig to be his hog. But since only one can remain to join this army, the Hog Rider and the Wizard have to fight. The Wizard immediately thought he had the high ground, so he started fireballing at the Hog Rider. But the Hog Rider had a larger brain because he proceeded to sacrifice his hog by chucking it at the Wizard, causing his fire to be wiped out. And this gave the Hog Rider the perfect opportunity to swoop in. And the post fight results, we got some bacon, we got a knocked out wizard, and we got the Hog Rider winning the fight. Okay, Pikachu from earlier now is just dancing all around my grass. We need to catch him. So next, we're gonna make a Pokeball to kidnap him inside. So I first built a white side using a bunch of plates. Yeah! And then just copy pasted that for the red half and added in the button in the middle that opens the Pokeball. Wait, why, why is it not working? This sucks! Now we just gotta connect the two halves and test if it can actually work. So I added these clip pieces on both sides to latch them onto each other. And boom, here it is, the Pokeball can open, and now it's time to catch Pikachu. I've dedicated my whole life to becoming a Pokemon master, and now's the time. I threw the ball at him, and... Alright, next, Minecraft is another one of my favorite games, but unlike Pokemon, LEGO has made a bunch of sets for them, but we keep getting Minecraft Steve. So I'm gonna make a different character to destroy these three Steves, aka Herobrine. Herobrine is pretty much this creepy Minecraft myth that used to scare me as a kid, so I grabbed some paper, cut it up, and smacked it on the eyes, so that now we have the most scary character in all of gaming joining our army. Next, probably the game that I've played the longest is Super Mario, and a couple months ago I made this giant LEGO Mario stop motion, and in it are a bunch of courses from different Mario games, but I never showed you guys how I made them, so first, let's make a classic 2D Mario level. I started off by building this long platform to design the level on, then I blew my life savings on a bunch of Super Mario LEGO sets only for the pieces so that I could build a bunch of the side builds to customize the levels with. Like these colorful hills, these clouds, these platforms, and of course some question blocks floating in the air. Next, I robbed a bank in order to buy a bunch of the LEGO Mario bad guys to add throughout the level to make it hard. I threw in Goombas, Bullet Bills, a Piranha Plant, and after some more customization, I made a completed 2D Mario level for this fake LEGO Mario minifigure to go through in order to get the flag and not get Princess Peach. And using a similar style of building, you can also make a 3D Mario level, like something from Mario Odyssey or Mario Galaxy. And that's pretty much what I did with this build right here. I added an ocean section, a desert section, some elevated platforms that lead to a checkpoint, and an angry chain chop in the middle that terrorized Mario and Luigi. Next, we gotta do the most popular and classic of all of the Mario games, Mario Kart. For this game, I'm first gonna build four Mario Karts that we're gonna race on a track. For the Mario figure, I made him this Mario Kart from Mario Kart Wii, which personally was my favorite Mario Kart, and yeah, fits Mario and works really well. Then for Luigi, I looked through the game, seeing a bunch of the different Mario Kart designs, and ultimately built this one because it's super long, just like Luigi. Then for both Mario and Waluigi, I made them each a bike that matches their colors, and now we have four finished Mario Karts. Next, for the course, I built Rainbow Road using a bunch of colorful tiles arranged in the pattern of a rainbow, easily the hardest thing I've ever built in my life, and then I spawned in mystery boxes and a bunch of enemies to inhabit the road while the four boys raced. But then, I spawned in a massive Lego Bowser to attack them, but before he destroys everything, let's move on to the next game. 
Okay, earlier we accidentally killed Pikachu, so we gotta build another Pokemon. So I'm gonna make Charizard, but he has an even weirder shape, so he's gonna be much harder to build with Lego. So I grabbed a bunch of these random orange and tan pieces and built up a body. Then I popped in two of these legs with some toes. Bro thinks he's Snorlax. And then I put together his tail with some fire at the end. Okay, now that the tail's done, we gotta add it on Charizard's butt. All right, I might have made his tail a little bit too long, but you know, he's just a long body. And then I built up these arms with some claws at the end. All right, I'm gonna test out the claws with a friendly little warm-up battle. Charizard, you scratch. After viciously assaulting a mouse, I built Charizard these two giant wings that can actually move around so he can fly. Alright, now we gotta add the strongest part of his body that he uses to inflict the most damage, his neck. So after building the almighty neck, I had to add a head. So I built this, but I still needed a way to make his mouth open, so I grabbed one of these clip pieces, but the only issue, I didn't have any in orange. So either I could just find another way to do it with the thousands of parts I have in my collection, or I could just paint it orange. Now that I made an openable head, I added it on Charizard, and now I have my new best friend. Here's how he looks next to this Pokemon Trainer minifigure I built, and now I'm gonna take him for a ride. Alright Charizard, now's your moment. Fly! <laughs> Bruh. Next, a game that I haven't played yet that I really want to play is Hogwarts Legacy, which is basically this open world Harry Potter game where you can play as an actual wizard and fight other characters. So first, I built my very own custom wizard character. I tried to make him look like Snape, who's my favorite character. And since in the game you can fight a bunch of cool monsters and stuff, Expelliarmus! I'm gonna build an epic battle, so I grabbed these LEGO train track pieces and customized them with a bunch of pieces in dark colors to make it look really run down and musty. So then, on one side I added my boy Snape, and on the other side I added this door that proceeded to have a massive snake come out of it attacking Snape. Now we have our completed build of Snape fighting a snake, but even though the build is done, the battle has just begun. Now in order for this wizard to be strong enough to join the army, he has to beat the snake or he's gonna live under my stairs. So as the snake lunged at the wizard, instead of using some dumb magic that he studied for years, he straight up chucked the wand in the snake's mouth, choking it and winning the battle. Now the most important thing that every single army needs to defeat any opponent is a super cute mascot. So next, we're building Five Nights at Freddy's. It's pretty much this horror game, I mean a, a kid's game, that's main character is this cute fluffy stuffed animal named Freddy. Now LEGO themselves don't want to scare kids, so they've never actually made this, but there's some fake Freddy figures online. But in order to build a legit one, I found this tutorial on YouTube that I took inspiration from where he pretty much made Freddy into minifigure form, and here he is. He's got his hat, he's got the puppy dog eyes, and most importantly, he's got his microphone to drop some bars. I'm just a kid. Yeah! Okay, if you thought looking at that was peaceful, now it's time to build Animal Crossing. If you don't remember, this was a game where you customized an island, and I was straight up grinding this over quarantine, so I'm gonna try and recreate one of my houses from the game. I started with the base plate and laid out a floor like a pro architect. I included the red bed that's in my actual island, then I added some Animal Crossing wallpaper, and then added a door to the front along with some curved walls before adding a red roof on top of the house along with a chimney. And the finished house looks perfect to move into to just run away from your problems. Next, every strong army needs a super scary soldier to inflict fear into the enemies, so now I'm gonna build Kirby. It's pretty much like this pink ball character with these giant eyes, so I whipped out my Sigma Mill pink pieces and started building a giant pink ball. I ended up making these two halves that stack like a burger, let's go! And then added in pink all around them and made Kirby's mouth, arms, and eyes. Alright, either our guy will just roll like this, or we could build him some actual feet. So I dripped him out with some shoes that cost a couple grand, and now the pink ball is done and ready to join the battle. Now, I'm gonna do a throwback to some builds that I made when I was younger that you guys probably never seen. So first, a couple years ago, I used to play a lot of Fortnite, so I made this build of tilted towers with the battle going on in it. I built this explosion with flame pieces, and then made the tower look super destroyed like all the 9 year olds were shooting through it. Next, my favorite game to play with other people is Super Smash Bros, and a couple years back I made the main course with the three islands and four custom minifigures fighting it to the death. And honestly, it looks straight out of the game, I just want to hop in and start beating them up. But now that we got some throwbacks, it's time for the grand finale. Okay, now for the final and strongest member of our army, we need someone to lead us to victory, so we're gonna make the strongest Pokemon ever, someone who everyone will fear, a titan amongst men, Snorlax. Look at that insane athleticism! Now something that most people don't know about Snorlax is that he's a pretty large Pokemon, so I grabbed a bunch of blue pieces and started building his body. Because he has a really defined stomach, I'm using a bunch of curved pieces and even this dish piece in the middle to represent that chest. Next, I gave him two arms with claws at the end, and built a head with plate pieces that I added right on. Alright, the head is now done and so is Snorlax. Now we just gotta answer the main question, can your boy stand? <coughs> Crap, I think the legs are a little too small to hold all of this sheer muscle. So I modified it by adding in these larger legs and now it's time for round two. 
Let's go! Snorlax stood up! It finally happened! Dude, this should be a national holiday! And with that insane moment, the army came together strong as ever with Snorlax as their leader. If you want to see more LEGO video games, this is actually a collaboration with my friend TD Bricks. He made some other video games, so go watch that. And thank you all genuinely so much for watching these videos. I'm just a dumb kid who plays with plastic, but you guys made it to the end of the video, and therefore, you're almost as cool as Snorlax.